finish? What have you started? This is Trevor from Ostrich Long Neck. In our second segment, we are going to be briefed on the basic breadboard layout. Once we're familiar with this equipment, our next mission will be to build up our first basic circuit on the breadboard, connect it to the Arduino and upload a sketch which will drive the strobing and flashing light effects. A breadboard is a great way to plan and test your circuits before building a permanent circuit board. Let's take a quick look at the layout of a breadboard. For this exercise, we'll examine the breadboard in a vertical position so that the smallest parts of the breadboard are at the top and bottom. All of the horizontal rows on the breadboard are linked together, meaning that current can flow between the holes which are next to each other. However, it's important to note that the rows are not linked across the divider or gutter, as it's also known. The divider, or gutter, allows a microchip such as an integrated circuit, IC, or microcontroller to straddle the board. In this position, we can access the rows leading up to each of the legs of the microchip without shorting the legs on the opposite side of the chip. The divider is also useful when a switch needs to be included in a circuit. A switch is essentially an open part of the circuit. No current flows across the switch until it's pressed or activated, which closes the circuit, and this forms a bridge for the current to flow. Vertical bus strips are continuous down the side of the board, which means that a current can flow between the holes that are above and below each other. These strips are used to provide a positive and ground point for the components on the breadboard in order to create a circuit. The strips run along both sides of the breadboard, but they don't cross the middle divider. A very handy tip is to cross the divider or gutter with jumper wires on one side of the breadboard. This allows the positive and ground rails to be connected throughout the circuit we're designing. Once we connect the positive rail on the left side with the one on the right side, both rails only need one connection from our power source to the breadboard. Likewise, once we connect the ground rail on the left side to the one on the right, all of the current can flow to a single ground connection which can be plugged anywhere on one of the negative rails. Here's a real life example. Some of the more expensive breadboards have binding posts which are especially handy if we use a voltage regulator to tweak the voltage of a circuit. It is important to remember that these binding posts need to be connected to the power rails of the breadboard in order to function. Something very handy to use when designing circuits using an Arduino is a breadboard PSU or power supply unit. This allows us to power our breadboard exactly the same way we power our Arduino. We can use a USB power source or an external power source from 9 volts to 12 volts, the same way we would for the Arduino. Onboard jumpers allow us to select a 3.3 volt or 5 volt output, and this is fed directly into both sets of power rails on the breadboard. And that's about it. We're all set to build our first circuit. The main thing to remember is which holes are connected to each other, and then we're good to go. Okay, so what exactly do we need to start our first circuit? Obviously we need a breadboard, an Arduino, and jumper wires. But besides these, we need a white 5mm LED. I use the 5mm because it's a lot brighter than a 3mm one. This is used in the strobe effect, where the LED flashes briefly and then goes off, all within the space of a second. We also need a colored LED, and in this case a green one, for the navigation effect. The green LED will flash on for one second and off for half a second. And lastly, we need one 100 ohm resistor. The very first part of setting up our circuit 
will be to connect the ground pin of the Arduino to the ground rail of the breadboard. This means that current can flow from anywhere on the breadboard right into the ground rail and back into the Arduino. Next we're going to plug in our white LED into the breadboard. As is indicated, we can place components anywhere along one of those rows in which the legs of the LED are and they will become part of the circuit of the LED. Now we take a jumper wire from output pin 13 on the Arduino board and we connect it to the anode which is the longer leg or the positive side of the LED. With an LED power can only flow in one direction from the positive leg to the negative leg. Because it's a diode it will not allow the power to flow in the opposite direction. Then we connect the negative leg or the cathode of the LED to the ground rail of the breadboard. When an LED is connected to pin 13 it doesn't need a resistor to be connected to the ground rail again because the Arduino board already has a built-in resistor on pin 13. So to demonstrate the circuit you'll see that power flows from pin 13 up the positive leg of the LED. It'll go across and light the up the LED, go down the negative leg of the LED, into the ground rail and straight back into the Arduino. Now for our next light, the navigation light, we once again place our LED onto the breadboard. You must take care to remember which side the positive leg is, it's the longer one, and which side the negative leg is. Then from pin 12, which is going to be our output pin to this LED, we connect that to the positive leg of the LED, and then we use a resistor to connect the negative leg to the ground rail of the circuit. So the current flow on this part of the circuit would be a signal from pin 12 goes up the positive leg of the LED, lights up the LED, down the negative leg, across the resistor, through the ground rail and back into the Arduino to complete the circuit. And there you have it, that's our first circuit set up. Now we'll upload the sketch to make everything work. Before we install the sketch to drive our circuit board, we just need to make sure that the correct libraries have been installed. On your console, please navigate to the area where you've installed your Arduino GUI. In my case, it's under Program Files Arduino. And then just open up the Libraries folder and make sure that the LED Flasher folder is showing there. Something which Windows users might want to do is to delete that Mac OS X directory because it has caused problems on previous versions of the Arduino GUI that I've used. Simply go there, delete, and it's gone. If you haven't installed the LED Flasher library yet, I have included a link below in the description. All you need to do is to download the file and then extract it into the Arduino libraries directory. And now we finally get to download the sketch to drive our circuit. Go to the following link, I have included it in the description. Once there, just click the download button and I'm saving it directly into my Arduino directory. Now that it's downloaded, let's open up the file. You'll notice that the Arduino GUI has thrown up a message to tell us that the sketch which we've downloaded needs to be run in a folder with the same name. So all you need to do to create the folder is to click OK. And there you go. The sketch is ready to be uploaded. I just want to quickly run through some aspects of the sketch with you. Over here you can see where we need that lead flasher library. It's there under the hash include command. After that we've just got a quick little setup before we start anything else. Here is where we set up the two different types of flashing lights. You'll see I've got strobe lights on pin 13. They are off for 900 milliseconds and they're on for 100 milliseconds. And then the nav lights, they're on pin 12. 
They are off for 500 milliseconds and they are on for a thousand milliseconds. Then we go into the setup part of the program. Yeah, I'm just initializing everything. I'm saying strobe lights begin, nav lights begin. And then we get to the main loop. Basically, the program just loops around over here, updating the strobe lights and the nav lights all the time, making sure that they're updated according to the timing which we've specified over there. So it's a good idea always to verify the sketch first by clicking the little tick sign there. And the program is quickly verifying the sketch. OK, all looks good. Now let's upload it to the Arduino. There you go. And as you can see, it's working perfectly. The strobe light just flashes once every second and the navigation lights blink on and off steadily. Wow, that was a heck of a lot of fun. Now that you're familiar with the basic breadboard layout and how to build a circuit, we are going to learn how to use the Arduino to program an 80 tiny chip which we will use in circuits to light up our Starship models. So, until next time... So long, farewell... And thanks for watching.